thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Love so undeniable I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still you call me deeper still into love 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 you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am Our Father everlasting the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified forgiveness is in you descended into darkness you rose in glorious life forever seated high 
I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in you. I believe you rose again. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in the life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints' communion. And in your holy church, I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Good morning. I'm Pastor Lisa. I'm the pastor here at Buda United Methodist Church, and we are so glad to have you here as part of our worship service this morning. I want to go ahead and invite you to sign in so we can figure out who's worshiping with us in this virtual space today. You can sign in in the comments. You can like this post. You can send us a selfie or an email, whatever way you want to let us know who, who you are and who's with you today. To help you worship and to help you participate in worship today, we have posted lyrics on this Facebook page. There's also uh, coloring pages for the kids as well as a word, pro, uh, word game that they can play. Finally, in our announcements today, I want to address President Trump's statement that churches are essential, that we need more prayer, not less, in this country. He is 100% right. That's why this church, Buda United Methodist Church, has never closed. We have not missed a single Sunday. And I sure hope all of you are praying for this country and this world right now. To quote our bishop, church is essential, but gathering is not. Friends, just this week, a group of us got together to talk about reopening, relaunching worship at this church. It was made up of people who bring varied perspectives to the table. A healthcare worker, an HR expert, a musician, a member of our tech team, and others who just bring general wisdom. Two of the members fell into the high risk category. The rest of us did not. There was a unanimous consensus that we do not need to rush out of the gate to reopen. Our plan is to meet every other week to watch the numbers around the state, the county, and the city, to plan carefully so that when we do come together again, it will be with the utmost safety of everyone in mind. Until then, we are looking at more ways to gather in community virtually. If you have ideas, please reach out to me. One common piece of feedback we've heard is that some of you are struggling to find the, the worship service on Facebook on Sunday mornings. We want to hear if you are having tech issues. We will come and we will help in masks. We are emailing and mailing copies of sermons out to people. If you want to get on those lists, let me know. Generally, please contact us if you know of somebody in this community who is trying to worship and can't. We will work to get beyond those roadblocks. Will you pray with me? Loving God, you reveal yourself in Jesus, your beloved child, who gives us a glimpse of your glory and invites us to share in all that is holy, the holiness that is you, your creation, your people. Meet us here today and teach us to be one, one in love for each other, one in understanding with all who look to your way. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, whose fervent prayer was ever, 
May they all be one. Amen. Each week when we come together, we're invited to think about the ways that we have stepped into God's plan for our lives and also to consider the ways that we have stepped aside from those plans. Given that, I invite you to join me in the prayer of confession. God, we believe you have called us to unity, but often we have isolated ourselves from others. Forgive us for the times we have turned our backs on those who are different. God, we believe that you have called us to live together as one body. Forgive us for the times we have created division within the world. God, we believe you ask us to look, listen, and learn from others. Forgive us for the times we have ridiculed and attacked those with different viewpoints. God, we believe you ask us to accept and seek to understand all who are called by your name. Forgive us for the times we have offended you by failing to love others as we love ourselves. God, we believe you call us to be one even as you are one. Forgive us for the disunity we have harbored and call us together as one. Amen. Choosing to set aside judgment, God gives us justice. Choosing to let go of punishment, God fills us with peace. Choosing to release anger, God's steadfast love rests upon us. Forgiven, redeemed, restored, we tell everyone through the lives that we lead what God has done for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Hi, 
everybody. Hi. Today, we are talking about, what are we talking about, Sirius? We're talking about praying. We are talking about praying. Um, so, let me ask you something. What is praying? Talking to God. It is talking to God. I brought my phone here so we can, uh, we can be reminded that when we, what do we use the phone for? We talk to our friends, right? Mm-hmm. We talk to our friends so we can stay in, we, so we can stay in touch with our friends and, um, and so we can have a relationship with them. And that is exactly why we pray to God. We pray so that we can have a relationship with God and that so we can stay in touch with God, so we can have that ongoing relationship. Um, so I've got a, a question for you. When are some times that we pray? At dinner. We do, we pray at dinner. And we pray at church. We do. We pray at church. Um, and sometimes we pray before bed. I like to pray in the morning when I wake up the first thing in the morning. I like to read my Bible and pray. Pray for everybody. Pray for my family and all my kids and everything like that. So, um, so yeah, so we pray to stay in touch with God. Do you know that Jesus, when he was here on the earth, he prayed for us? He prayed for you and me. How could that happen? How could Jesus pray for us? We weren't born yet. Well, he, you know how he prayed for us? He prayed for all the Christians. He prayed for all the Christians that believe in him and all the Christians that believe in God. And that's you and me, right? Mm -hmm. That's you and me too. We are all here included in the people that love Jesus and love God. So, um, so that's what Jesus did when he was here. He taught us how to have a relationship with God through praying. He taught us how to pray. And he reminded us that we should always pray to God to have that relationship with God. Would you like to pray with me right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Dear Lord, thank you for sending us Jesus to teach us how to pray and to teach us how to have a relationship with you. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know them in truth that I come from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Draw us close, Holy Spirit, as your word is proclaimed. Let the word of faith be on our lips and in our hearts, and let all other words slip away. 
May there be one voice that we hear today, the voice of grace, the voice of love. Amen. Do you ever get this nagging feeling that you're forgetting to do something really, really important? I bet a lot of us had that at first as we began our time of sheltering in place. There were days I know when I could barely remember if I had brushed my teeth or taken a shower that morning. Days when I couldn't even remember what day of the week it was. I spent a lot of time with that nagging feeling that I was forgetting something. But you know what? I've gotten used to it. And as time has gone by, when I feel that bubbling to the surface, I just regularly dismiss it now. I mean, my calendar, I hardly even look at it anymore. I want a giant red stamp that says canceled that I could just stamp on the months of March and April and May. And June, well, let's just say I've got my eye on you, June. You may get that red canceled stamp too. Because lately, as the end of May has approached and June is looming, I've had that increasing feeling that I'm neglecting something. I've had that feeling grow stronger and stronger. And I think I may have figured out what it is. You see, as Methodists, the beginning of June means we should be gathering for annual conference. Annual conference is when all the United Methodist pastors and lay delegates from this area of Tex Texas get together to discuss, learn, and sometimes vote on different matters. This meeting for the last number of years has been held in Corpus Christi. And I don't know if you've ever driven there, but pretty much in order to get the, where the conference is in Corpus, Corpus, no matter where you are coming from in the Rio, Texas conference, eventually you have to get on Highway 37. As I make my way down past San Antonio and pick up 37 there, as I drive on that long road seemingly forever, past San Antonio suburbs, past pastures of longhorns and sheep, past oil wells, and eventually palm trees. And as I drive, I envision all these Methodists are coming and merging onto this very same road, heading to Corpus Christi. Methodists from Austin and McAllen, San Angelo and Victoria, from Petite, LaGrange, Eagle Pass, and Johnsonville, Methodists from big cities and rural ranches, from beach towns to the U.S.-Mexico border. We all eventually merge onto 37, heading in the same direction at about the same time. And we have one purpose, to meet and dr to dream and decide about the upcoming year in the life of the church that we all love. Do we all have the same idea about what that's going to look like and what the best path for the church will be? Absolutely not. But we all merge onto that same path, onto Highway 37, with the same goal in mind, with our hearts aligned as one in love for our church. In our passage from John today, Jesus is keenly aware of how important unity is, both for his disciples' faith at that time, as well as the future faith of the church. It's important to note where this passage comes in the Gospel of John. Just as a reminder, we are in chapter 17 with our scripture today. And if you have a Bible handy, you might notice that for five straight chapters, chapters 13 through 17, this entire set of chapters is a long quotation from Jesus. Scholars call it Jesus' farewell discourse, his goodbye speech, as it were. And in John's account, all of this takes place in the upper room on the night before Jesus' arrest. These five chapters include such scenes as Jesus washing the disciples' feet, sharing the Last Supper together, Jesus reassuring them of the Holy Spirit's future arrival, his command to love one another, and for them to know that the way to eternal life is through him. For Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. All of that is part of this long farewell discourse before Jesus faced his passion and death. 
But what's interesting is that this last chapter, chapter 17, is not a set of teachings by Jesus like the rest. It's a prayer. Chapter 17 begins after Jesus had spoken these words. He looked up to heaven and said. Jesus prayed for his disciples, for their faith, for them to have strength in the hours and days ahead, as well as for the time that was to come after his ascension to heaven. And in a very real way, Jesus was praying for us, you and me, today. Really, listen to what he said. He said, I ask not only on behalf of these, the disciples with him in the upper room, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through the word. That's you and me. That's us. Jesus' prayer for the, is for those that are in that upper room, and it's also for all who will believe in him in the future through those disciples' testimony. That's us. And what did he pray for? It says that they all may be one. Throughout this passage, Jesus prayed for those who believe in him to be one, just as he is one with God. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one. Why is this important, this unity in Christ? It tells us that. It says, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. It is through this unity that belief is formed, belief in God and in God's Son, Jesus Christ. Here Jesus is saying that. Can you imagine what he felt as he moved towards his own death and still saw squabbling and power plays among the disciples? disunity, if you will. For that matter, can we imagine what Jesus feels today as he observes our denominational squabbles and conflicts? The importance of unity among believers is that such oneness leads the world to believe. And if unity leads others to believe, then the counterpart of that statement is that some people do not believe in God and in Jesus because those people see squabblings among the followers of Jesus. The ultimate unity of the church is not in human maneuvering, but in the oneness of God. There's another theme that emerges from this prayer in Jesus' farewell speech, and that theme is love. Five times within these six verses, Jesus named love as the key descriptor of divine relationships. Love is the bond within the Godhead, the Trinity. Love is the divine gift to the disciples. Love is the magnetic grace through which God seeks to attract the world. Love is the ingredient that the Lord prays will be within his followers. These prayers might seem like sentimental mishmash if we didn't know how the story would end. The love for which Jesus prayed, it's a cross-shaped love. Imagine this, we've grown accustomed to a heart being the symbol of love, right? We see it on Valentine's Day everywhere. I send a heart emoji to my husband and my children to remind them that I love them. My kids, if I send them a picture of our dog, will often respond with that smiley face with the heart-shaped eyes. Let's just pretend for a second that instead of a heart, when we saw a cross, that that was the symbol for love. What if we could somehow change it so that when instead of a heart, when people saw that cross, they instantly thought of love? Just think about that for a second. You know, I, I sometimes ask if, if unity is even a realistic goal anymore for our denomination. In light of Jesus' prayer, 
the thing is, is it should not just be a goal of ours as Christians. It should be our life's mission. For it is in this theme of love that the clear intention of unity in Christ is revealed. It's because of God's love for us in Jesus Christ that we are called to love others so that we may be one. Now, that doesn't mean, I'm going to say this again, that we will always be of one mind on everything. That would be pretty boring, actually. We're talking about unity without uniformity, right? It doesn't mean we have to be in lockstep agreement on every detail or every bit of minutia. It does mean, though, that we will live our life with a foundational tenet of faith that God has loved us just as God has loved his son, Jesus Christ. And because of that, we will seek in our life as the church and in our life as individuals, disciples, to bring about that unity and that love of the body of Christ in this world. Unity combined with loving tolerance. That's manageable, I think. What does it look like to bring about this unity in Christ that Jesus prays for? How are we called to let our lives unite others to follow Jesus? How might we bear witness to the one who has loved us so that all may be one? I mentioned before about annual conference when all the Methodists in this part of Texas gather annually to make decisions. How we all get on Highway 37 and travel as one body. And as some of you are keenly aware, this spring, the Global United Methodist Church was to do much the same thing in what it calls its quadrennial meeting. They were supposed to gather at general conference as a denomination from around the world. It seemed very apparent that this church was going to split into two or more iterations of Methodists at this meeting. And one of those iterations is focused on practicing just what our scripture passage has described today. Unity without uniformity. Tolerance wrapped up in love. Both annual and general conferences have been postponed due to COVID-19. While I'm not someone who believes that God caused COVID-19 in order to disrupt general or annual conferences, I am someone who believes that God will use something like COVID-19 and the paused, pause that we are forced into by it to invite our groups, our churches, and our denomination to reflect and to pray and to determine a better path forward. Remembering God's call on our lives to bring unity and loving tolerance to the forefront so that others who are watching will believe. I see this postponement as a time when we can work towards bringing others alongside of this plan, this plan that would show the world that there is a large number of Methodists who believe in unity without uniformity, who believe in a church body that conducts itself with loving tolerance. Amen. We're going to pray for our offering now. During the next song, you will see some ways that you can help to support this church financially if you can and if you wish. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we pray this day for our church. We pray that we can smooth out the wrinkles of our conflicts. We pray that we will use the time that we've been given to us to show the world your love. And God, as we offer to you our gifts this morning, we ask that you help us to use them in such a way that they will show others who you are. Amen. One love, one heart, let's get together 
and we'll feel all right. Hear the children crying, one love. Hear the children crying, one heart. Give thanks and praise to the Lord, and I will feel all right. Oh, singing, let's get together, and we will feel all right. Whoa. Let them all pass their dirty remarks. There is one question that I'd really love to ask. Is there a place for the hopeless, hopeless sinner who has hurt all mankind just to save his own? Believe me, one love, one heart. Oh, let's get together and we will feel all right. As it was in the beginning, one love. Oh, it shall be in the end, one heart. Give thanks and praise to the Lord and things will be all right. Let's get together and we will feel all right. I got one more thing now. Oh, let's get together to fight this holy Armageddon. One love, so when the man comes, there will be no, no doom. One song, have pity on those whose chances grow thinner. There ain't no hiding place from the father of creation. Say it, one love, one heart. Oh, let's get together and we will feel all right. I'm pleading to mankind, one love. Oh, Lord, one heart. Let's give thanks and praise to the Lord and feel all right. Give thanks and praise to the Lord and we will all feel all right. Let's get together and feel all right. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ, his son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks, give thanks. Yes, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks, give thanks. We've come to that part in the service where we're going to invite you to participate fully. We'd like you to lift up your joys and your concerns that you've brought here to this worship service this morning. You can do that by adding those, those prayers into the comments section, or you can just lift them up where you are. With that, please pray with me. God, we come to you today with broken hearts. There is so much in this world that troubles us. Hear now these prayers of concern.
And God, we also recognize that among this concern and worry that we have, you also bless us each and every day. In recognition of that, we give to you all the joys that we have experienced. God, we pray all these things and one thing more using the words Jesus taught the disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of my love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold. Take Intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take my life and I will be ever only all for thee. And now will you receive these words of benediction. May you go in the name of God the Creator, Jesus Christ the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, the sustainer, three in one and one in three. Go in peace. Go now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Bye.
as strong and true. No God will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. Thank you. 